Welcome to another ramble through the history of Rowan County. I'm Gary Fries of Catawba College. It has been my privilege during this series to bring you stories on our community's past. We have turned to the resources of the Rowan Public Library to gain a new perspective on local history. Today, we're going back to the beginning. We're going to retrace the path that our ancestors took to reach this special place. We're going to take a trip along the Great Wagon Road. In the 21st century, we live in a world of fast lanes and clogged interstates. Back in the 1700s, travel was much slower, but it could be just as frustrating. People were on the move then, just as they are now. One of the most important colonial roads came right down Main Street in Salisbury. And here in China Grove, and Main Street in Landis. In fact, we can say that this was our mother road, for without it, Rowan County might never have been born. We are going to start our study of the Great Wagon Road by explaining the many words in its name. Originally, it was called the Philadelphia Wagon Road. It started on Market Street in that famous Pennsylvania city, about a block from where Benjamin Franklin ran his print shop. In the 1720s, the road took Pennsylvanians west past York near the Susquehanna River, then through Gettysburg, the site of the later Civil War battle. After that, the road was angled south because the high ridges of the Appalachian Mountains discouraged travel further west and north. It was called the Wagon Road because of these. One of the inventions to come off the Great Wagon Road was the American covered wagon. It was developed in Pennsylvania at a place called Conestoga, west of Philadelphia, and colonial settlers called these wagons the Conestoga Wagon. This is a great example of one which we have here at the Rowan Museum in Salisbury. It was built to go long distances and it was built to last. It had to be big enough to carry a family's complete possessions so that they could set up a new house once they got to Rowan County. It had to be sturdy enough to go over all these rocky roads and streams which they had to cross. The wagon was actually curved in its bed so that you could float it like a boat, and it had interchangeable parts almost that allowed you to repair it as you went down to the south. This wagon is one of a lot of examples that we still have of the type that became the covered wagon, which took Americans across the west. Why, might you ask, did this road go to and from Philadelphia? In the colonial period, Pennsylvania was one of the best places to live in the whole world. It was successfully settled all the way from the Delaware River to the Blue Ridge. Its soil and climate attracted farmers from all over Western Europe. These immigrants created what was called the breadbasket of the British Empire. So many families came to Pennsylvania that some had to head south to look for more land. Two groups of immigrants from Europe in particular helped to open the Great Wagon Road. One was the Germans who came from the area of the Rhine River Valley. The other was the Scots-Irish, people who had been Scottish in origin, but who had spent decades living in the northern section of Ireland that's called Ulster. Many of the residents of Rowan County today can trace their heritage back to Germany. I'm here at the Frontier Culture Museum in Stanton, Virginia, right on the old Great Wagon Road, and I'm looking at an authentic 1688 house from Germany. It came from the Palatinate region, which is the exact same region where many of the early settlers of Rowan County came from. It is a wattle and daub house, which means that it had an exterior timber frame filled in by mud and cement. It was then whitewashed to look like you see here. Most of our ancestors who were German would recognize this house as being something their family might once have lived in.
were two reasons why our German ancestors left their homeland. First was religious tolerance. Many of the villages in the lower Rhine Valley were caught up in religious wars in the late 1600s. Often young men in the family were taken into the military against their will and many didn't come back. The second reason was overpopulation. There were simply more people on farms like this one than there were places to farm and they simply needed to go somewhere else to make a better living. The people of West Rowan County often trace their ancestry to Northern Ireland, also called Ulster. In the 1600s, the English sent thousands of Scottish families to inhabit the northern part of the island of Ireland. These families stayed there until the early 1700s, when overcrowding and political oppression sent many of them to the North American continent. This is a typical Ulster house and was the kind of house many of the families of Rowan could trace themselves back to. important travelers on the Great Wagon Road was the livestock. The early settlers had to bring their animals along with them. As you see here with these pigs at the Frontier Culture Museum, livestock was a very important investment. It provided food, as you would find with ham and bacon here, but it also would provide its own reproduction. These are the tires of the Great Wagon Road. Because the road was so rough and the distance was so long, the wooden wheels of the Conestoga wagons had to be banded with these thick pieces of iron. They were forged in blacksmith shops in Pennsylvania, and many of them served to get the people all the way to North Carolina. So why, we must ask, did these Scotch-Irish and Germans take the Philadelphia wagon road all the way to North Carolina if Pennsylvania was the place to be? The answer is simple. Pennsylvania's bountiful resources attracted way too many people, way too fast. Soon, the nearby mountains were hemming in with settlement. People who wanted more room to farm and have prosperous families did the logical thing. They headed south to Carolina, where the land was half as expensive. By the 1730s, first the Scotch-Irish, then the Germans were on the move across the Potomac River into the colony of Virginia. The wagon road was built on top of an old Indian trail called the Warrior's Path. This was the trail which connected the Iroquois in upstate New York to their cousins, the Cherokee in the two Carolinas. It was used from the late 1600s until the mid 1700s by Indians including the Catawba, who would often attack the Iroquois during the winter. In 1744, the Indian nation signed a treaty with the colony of Virginia that allowed whites to pass along the path. By the 1750s, the path had been widened wide enough to allow wagons to go along it. This road would continuously be used into the 1800s. In the 1840s, it would actually be paved, one of the very first paved roads in America, and would be known as the Valley Pike. Soon, whites were snatching up the fertile lands of the Valley of Virginia as fast as they could. Benjamin Franklin reported in his Philadelphia newspaper that more than 1,000 wagons a year were passing through that part of the Great Valley of Virginia. I'm standing in the actual bed of the Great Wagon Road. This route is more than 250 years old. The first settlers to Rowan County would have come by here on their way from Pennsylvania to North Carolina. The village around me is called Timber Ridge. It was originally settled in the 1740s by Scotch-Irish who came down into the Shenandoah Valley. The road passes by here 
because it naturally followed the contours of this brook. The road would have been a lot easier to build where you had small valleys that cut through the mountains. This is Timber Ridge Presbyterian Church. It was built in 1756. That's when Salisbury was just two years old. This would have been one of the landmarks on the Great Wagon Road that would have told travelers they were going in the right direction. Since many of the early migrants to Rowan County were Scotch-Irish Presbyterians themselves, some of them might have even stopped and worshipped here in the late 1750s. People came down the Great Wagon Road for more than 20 years to go to Colonial Rowan County. If they had passed by around 1773, they might have stopped to view one of the oldest tombstones here at the cemetery at Timber Ridge Church. This person died in 1773, and he left one of the more interesting inscriptions for people to ponder as they pass by. Remember me as you pass by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am, now you soon will be. Therefore ponder on eternity. Tombstones with these types of inscriptions will be found in the early cemeteries of Rowan County as well, particularly at places like Thyatira and Third Creek churches. Many of the early settlers of Rowan would have come right past this church looking for even more land to the south. By the late 1740s, the wagon road had a ferry across the Potomac River, now the town of Williamsport, Maryland. The road had been pushed through a gap near the future site of the city of Roanoke, Virginia. A few of the settlers went on up the valley towards what is today Tennessee. However, the Cherokee did not welcome these newcomers, so many families that did not stay in Virginia kept on coming to the two Carolinas colonies the going could be lonely. Hugh McAdam, a visiting Presbyterian minister, noted that there was at best a house every 10 miles along the road. Travelers knew that they were nearing North Carolina when they saw what's behind me. I'm in front of Pilot Mountain, north of Winston-Salem. You could see it as far as 40 miles away on the Great Wagon Road. One of the first groups of Moravians to come to Wachovia said that once they saw this mountain, they knew they would be near their dear home. After travelers passed Pilot Mountain, they came to Wachovia, the Moravian settlement that was established in 1753, the same year that Rowan County was founded. This is Bethabara, which was the first of the Moravian settlements. It's as old as Salisbury. I'm standing at Main Street here in Bethabara. This is where the settlers took the fork that was called the Road to Salisbury. Those travelers who took the Road to Salisbury probably spent the night here in the stockade in Bethabara. When the Moravians built this settlement, they put a fence around it. They wanted to keep out two things, wild animals at night and the possibility that the Cherokee might attack. During the French and Indian War, Bethabara was one of the places of refuge for the early settlers of Rowan County. Perhaps the most interesting people to come down the Great Wagon Road and settle early Rowan were the Moravians. They were Germans who liked to live together and create crafts and worship together in communal settlements like Bethabara. I'm standing in front of their church where they held daily services. They were noted for their music. And in fact, if people who were coming to Salisbury stopped here overnight, they could actually attend the worship service and hear one of the first organs in Rowan County. This is the town well dug at Bethabara in 1763. Most of the travelers who would have gone down the road to Salisbury would have stopped to replenish themselves with water right here. This is one of the wagons at Bethabara that doesn't have a cover. These are actually the wooden hoops which held the cover up. This wagon also has a brake. You'll notice that the driver of the wagon would have sat here in the front on the left side to be able to actually operate the brake. That's why today, Americans drive with the driver on the left side. From Wachovia, there were two principal ways to get to Salisbury. One was the shallow Ford Road, which crossed the Yakin River and headed over into what is today Davie County and came down from there. The second, was what is Highway 150 today that comes down through Davidson County and comes to the Yakin River here. 
where Highway 29, the interstate, and the railroad crossed the river. Back in colonial days, this was called the Trading Ford, and it was located right beyond all these bridges. Back before there was a lake, the river was actually shallow enough here for wagons to cross. Salisbury was established in 1753, where a branch from the Trading Ford merged with the one from Shallow Ford. Thus, a branch of the older trading path went off to the west here, roughly along what we call Highway 150 today. The intersection of these paths is one of the principal reasons that the courthouse was put here, not somewhere else, making Salisbury the seat of Rowan County. The Great Wagon Road eventually went way beyond Salisbury. Before 1760, it was opened into South Carolina. At Poplar Tent Road in Cabarrus County, the Pfeiffer family built one of the best known taverns in the 13 colonies. Near here, the road split once again. One branch went down to Waxhaw and on to Camden in South Carolina. The other way slanted southwest past today's Lowe's Motor Speedway, heading towards the Catawba Indian Nation where Carol Winds is today. It was along this part of the road that the founders of Mecklenburg County built Charlotte in 1762. In colonial days, a great road was any route that took someone long distances. The Great Philadelphia Wagon Road eventually extended more than 700 miles all the way to Augusta, Georgia. As you can tell from all the maps, this was quite a trip. We're here at the Mount Airy Museum of Regional History, where they have this wonderful display on the Great Philadelphia Wagon Road. They also show the map that we've been talking about that takes you to Salisbury. They show that when Rowan County was established in 1753, Surrey County and Stokes County were part of Rowan. The Great Wagon Road cut across a portion of that, and as you can tell here, it goes down to Bethabara and Salem, where Wachovia is. They also have this amazing diorama, which depicts how you got over the mountains and into Carolina. The migrants down the Great Wagon Road had to bring everything with them. This included their livestock, their household goods, and the tools that they would need to farm here in Rowan County. These are some of the examples of the type of tools that would have come down in the 18th century. Sometimes the tools were made once people got here. In 1749, Henry Whitener, one of the first migrants, brought a thousand pounds of iron with him in a wagon. Within a year of arrival, the migrants coming down the Great Wagon Road would have found land like this. Most of it was grassland. For centuries, Indians had kept this clear for hunting, and it was very good for planting crops like wheat. Families came down the Great Wagon Road in the autumn, and they often had to find some sort of shelter to get through the first winter. Most built lean-tos out of branches from trees. The Boone family, came to North Carolina in the fall of 1750, and legend says that they spent their first winter here at this cave on the Yakin River in Davidson County. It's said that young Daniel, who was a teenager at the time, spent the entire winter hunting up and down the Yakin River. Squire Boone was one of the organizers of Rowan County in 1753, and he was one of the officials which helped establish the location of Salisbury. Squire and his wife Sarah, also buried here, lived near Moxville for the rest of their lives. Their son Daniel, the more famous member, married Rebecca Bryan, lived a little bit to the north of Moxville near the Great Wagon Road, and then moved on west. Boone later built the most famous extension of the Great Wagon Road, the Wilderness Road into Kentucky. Within months of arrival, many migrants from Pennsylvania had registered property with local officials. 
land itself was easy to obtain for all but the poorest of settlers. Rowan County back then included the region west from Greensboro to the Blue Ridge Mountains. This whole space belonged to a British aristocrat, Lord Granville. The Granville District, as it was called, was set up to make real estate attractive to migrants from Pennsylvania. For a series of fees that resemble closing costs today, a family could get as much as 640 acres. By the spring after arrival, most families had begun to build their log houses. This is a good example of one as a cutaway here at the Mount Airy Museum. You see the woodwork and all the labor which had to go into making this cabin. Almost everything that's wood would have been made once folks arrived in Rowan County. The metal objects and the ceramics that you see are likely things that they brought down in the wagon from Pennsylvania. The earliest settlers to Rowan tried to choose their home sites wisely. They wanted a place with ready access to water and good timber. We're here at the Knox family farm in western Rowan County. James Knox grew up in Northern Ireland. In fact, he lived in houses very similar to the one we saw at the museum in Virginia. James Knox came to Philadelphia in the 1740s, and he soon went to work on the Great Wagon Road. He became noted for being a horse trader, and he carried letters with him from friends attesting to his honesty. James Knox sold enough horses until he could afford a farm in Rowan County. His family has been settled here since 1758. The Knoxes built a log house, which you see in this old photograph at the Rowan Public Library. They also built a spring house, which you see here. It supplied them with water, and it kept cool their dairy products and other foods. It's still being used because the Knoxes still farm the original place that they set up when they came down the Great Wagon Road. You notice that they even have one of the old wagon hoops from that time. By the time the Knoxes had settled here, there were more than 100 Scotch-Irish families in the area. Eventually, they would give this neighborhood a name, Mount Ulla, after a place they had come from in Northern Ireland. The most famous example of a house we have that dates to the Great Wagon Road period is this, the old stone house at Granite Quarry. It was built by Michael Brown in 1766. Brown was a German immigrant who had lived in Pennsylvania and came down the Great Wagon Road perhaps as early as 1757. He built this house in 1766. And as you can tell from its size and its handsome exterior, he had prospered since coming to Rowan County. Brown was a wheelwright, and it's very likely that he repaired the wagons of the travelers who were passing nearby on the wagon road. What is today Highway 52 was also a colonial road to South Carolina, and I suspect that Brown built this house near Dunn's Mountain because of its closeness to where those two roads crossed. Brown's house was a testimony to the fact that you could move to Rowan County and prosper. He basically built a house that was a kind of house common to Pennsylvania. Brown eventually had another house and a store in Salisbury. He owned slaves, was a farmer, and he was married three times. The third time he was married was at age 83. His wife was 30. Before his death, they had a child. When Rowan County was established in 1753, Squire Boone and the other organizers of the new county 
had to find a location for the courthouse. They chose a small hill just to the west of the Great Wagon Road, near where the two branches of the road came from Wachovia. Today, we know those as Inna Street and Main Street here in Salisbury. This is the door of that original courthouse, which was completed by 1754. The two principal streets on the 1754 plat drawn by James Carter were named for the two Granville agents, James Ennis and Francis Corbin. Most Rowan residents have forgotten that Main Street was once named Corbin Street. In 1755, a governor of North Carolina said that Salisbury had a new courthouse and six or seven log houses. Forty years later, Rowan County had become crowded with the very families that had come down the Great Wagon Road, particularly the German ones like the Lingles and the Liven Goods, and the Scotch-Irish, including the Cowans and the Grahams. By the end of the 18th century, the heyday of the Great Wagon Road had passed. The residents of Rowan County developed their own network of roads to take them wherever they wanted to go. By the middle of the 19th century, Rowan residents had a different way to travel. The railroad arrived in Salisbury. In the 1900s, automobiles would write the last chapter of the legacy of the Great Wagon Road. Highway 29 would be paved all the way from Maryland to Florida. The road from Lexington to Charlotte would follow the old wagon road route. Motorists in the 1930s and 40s could stop at this historical marker about the trading ford to remind them of the heritage of the wagon road. As you have learned, the Great Wagon Road brought our first ancestors to Rowan County more than 250 years ago. Today, we drive many of the same roads that they took, and we make many of the same choices that they made in order to come to this place. The great American philosopher Yogi Berra once said, when you come to the fork of the road, take it. Today, we can learn a lot from the courage and the hopes that our ancestors brought to this place as we go on making our own history in our new century. If you have any comments, additional ideas for video topics, or you would like to assist in the funding of the Ramble Through Rowan video series, please contact me, Gretchen Bialfus Witt, at the Edith M. Clark History Room of the Rowan Public Library, 704 216 8232. We would like to extend our thanks to the Blanche and Julian Robertson Family Foundation for funding the Great Wagon Road Project.